something I call a reverse flower sweep. I have no idea what it really is, but it feels like a reverse flower sweep to me, so I call it that. I didn't invent it, I'm sure, uh, but it's unique and it's fun. But let's do flower sweeps first. That'll take a big chunk of the time. And then if we are successful in our flower sweeps, then the back half, the secondary sweep, should be pretty easy to do. Um, it flows very well with Charles's class. The inverted stuff you guys just did uh, is gonna help quite a lot. So um, let's get started. Can I use you again? This is my favorite Uki from last year. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. He's so honored. I was, he did awesome. All right, so um, first thing we're gonna do, starting off in guard. Yeah, real simple. Top player is just gonna give us a, a, a medium base. Nothing too, no, nothing too strong, but also not like a dead fish. Yeah, so I wanna set up my flower sweep just with my legs first, okay? My goal is gonna be take him over to one o'clock. If my head's 12, my butt is six, I'm going to one o'clock, right? So. I'm gonna use my right leg in this scenario to kick him in the armpit and send him that direction. Yeah, so to get momentum for that, I'm gonna sit up, give him a little hug, and I'm gonna fall back and then kick, kind of break into a little bit. Just like that. I can go both ways, but I'm gonna go this way just over and over again, right? So I'm gonna fall back and kick. You don't have to point your toes, I just do. <coughs> I'm weird, sorry, it's gotta be pretty. All right, so fall back, Kick, look over your shoulder. Let's start right there, real simple. Easy enough? Go do that. All right. We're gonna have this reoccurring theme that I find in almost all of my Jiu Jitsu, and it's this rule, right? Uh, I talked about it last night in my workshop, but, <coughs> my guard is fine. Here's the rule, if I, <clears throat> clamp my legs and clamp my arms, then neither of us can move, which is good sometimes. If I relax my legs and relax my arms, both of us can move, which is good sometimes. But the vast majority of times in grappling, we either clamp with our legs and manipulate with our arms, or we clamp with our arms and move with our legs. Make sense? So I, right now I'm clamping with my legs. So like a basic arm drag, my legs clamp, my upper body manipulates, now my upper body clamps, legs move, right? Legs clamp, arms move, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? <clears throat> that's, how I, that's how I can progress. So we do a flower sweep. I have to get to an upper body clamp so that my lower body can manipulate. So by just doing this drill, we have total freedom and it's meaningless. It has a meaning, right? But the goal is to get used to that break dance move, okay? Now we're gonna make it a little bit more jujitsu like So we're gonna add one more step. We're gonna sit up this time. We're gonna go underhook the leg. Left arm is still free. The underhook leg kicks in the armpit. I sit back like this. My goal is to get my hand all the way back to my hair. So no shallow underhooks. Make sure I get my head to his knee. And I'm going way up like this. So one more step in the right direction. We're sitting up. I underhook. This leg is still gonna kick him in the armpit as I fall back. Nice and deep. Yeah, so one baby step we're adding up. Does that make sense? Add that step, go. Okay, so now we've given three limbs a job. We have to give all four limbs a job. So now we add our arm drag in, okay? So this usually happens um, not from an arm drag for me, uh, but off of a failed back take. So we're in transition. Maybe I have uh, a partial back take from like a turtle. And I'm falling off this way. And this is where I find it happen a lot. So the arm is already in an arm drag position, but he squares back up to me. And I hope I sweep from here. Yeah, but for now, we'll do it in a more isolated situation. We're gonna go from a little arm drag, and I'm gonna grab his lat, okay? So I have his lat already. We're gonna have a little bit of a pullback from our training partners, I'll pull back a little bit. Just get me elevated off, off the ground. Yeah, this is gonna uh, simulate that same kind of rock back motion to get our momentum going. From here, the rule really is important. I'm clamping my upper body tightly, my lower body can now move. If I move my lower body and I relax my arm, I lose everything, okay? So I have to commit to like a ratchet strap. So I've, I've connected to him, nice and tight, the upper body, lower body can now move. So, little arm track, he grabs the lat, he sits up, I go under, and I'm kicking over this way. All right, so. We added the arm drag in, tight, there's our sweep. The goal now, 
is twofold. I have to keep him tight to me. I got to move myself over the head. I can absolutely laterally sweep somebody. And I think more often than not, when we see a flower sweep, the person just kind of rolls them this way. Yeah? A lot has to go wrong from the defender for that to work. Okay? We always got to think about it this way. A sweep is a product of trapping one limb and then pushing them over that limb. So if I have his right arm connected to me, he cannot post basically in 3 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Right? And that gets a little bit blurry based off his skill level, right? 12 o'clock can be corrected with his free arm, his left arm, yeah? He might be even get to like almost one o'clock with that arm to stop the post, yeah? His leg can also move a little bit past three o'clock based on his skill level. So I have a very small window of success here, okay? The more I can turn him and wrap him up with this pendulum motion by getting myself here, the more options I have, all right? So the goal is going to be to get my feet left foot way overhead here. Because now I can take him where I need him to be. All right? My right arm is still connected to my hair. I'm a deep underhook, and I'm nice and tight to him. Once we have somebody here, it's incredibly challenging for the defender to push back up and square back up. I like to control the sweep the whole way. Yeah? If I can do this well, I should be... Pretty easy to rewind it back to the beginning. Yeah? I should also be able to start and stop the sweep whenever I want. So when we do it as a beginner, it's a momentum. Let me fly. Yeah? When we get better at this, it becomes this slower movement. And we can go back and forth, controlling the whole way. Right? That's going to be our goal. If we can't do it slow, we shouldn't do it fast. Yeah? So, arm drag, grab the lat, turning, toes to the mat if I can. No, we, can we can't all do this, it's okay. Right? Now, the toe on the mat is going to swing. Nice and graceful. Yeah? If you can't all do it like that, you have to go home. <laughs> One attempt. <clears throat> you. All right, should we try that? Okay, so very simple idea here, right? If I have my training partner here and he's in a turtle by himself. Uh, put your hands on the mat like a dumb turtle. <laughs> That's fine. It's good. I don't have preach yet. So, so here he has a strong base. It'd be really hard for me to make him do a shoulder roll, right? And my goal for this flower sweep is to have him. I don't want to roll him like a log this way. That's too hard. Yeah. I want to make him do a shoulder roll. So I'm gonna trap one of his arms, and I'm gonna try to wrap myself around. And I want to create a big space between his shoulder on the right side of his body and his right ear. Okay, and so if I grab his hand, give me your right hand. Yeah, this is an arm drag. Can I pull this wrist along? Yeah, you can pull it. Right? If I pull his arm this way, I can eventually get him to roll over. <laughs> <laughs> Not super efficient. <laughs> go back. <clears throat> that's, what, that's what we're doing when we do a lateral flower sweep. Right, when we roll left to right, we're doing that. It works, but it's very hard to make work if the person's bigger than you or they're just not dead. So if I take his arm and I pull it closer to his hip, I get a little bit easier rotation. Okay? Put your arm between your legs. I put it between his legs. <laughs> really easy to sweep him. Yeah? <laughs> Judo. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wrap somebody up in a way that puts his hand way here and I'm gonna come underneath him. And if we did it right, we felt at one point where I moved my body and I wrapped him up so much that he felt very light. And that's what we wanna feel. The second purpose behind that big rotation is giving me other options, okay? If I can put my balls in his armpit, I'm winning the fight, all right? So if I can get perpendicular to him, because here, 
even if he starts to posture up, I'm still in a good spot. Okay, so I have a good arm bar attack as a secondary attack. So I need to get perpendicular to somebody. If he's able to pull his arm out, I have triangle attacks. So all that happens is I'm perpendicular to him. If I flower sweep and I keep my hips connected to his hips, and he pulls his arm out, I have no secondary attack. Right? It's really hard to arm bar somebody with my hips this low. But if I could turn myself here, now I have an option to keep the flower sweep or switch to an arm bar based off his reaction. If I go to arm bar him because he postures up and he buries his head back down, I can come back to the sweep. Right? So I have many options by getting that huge angle. So it's really important. Nice tight clamp here. Start my sweep. I'm bringing up, 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 up here. All right? I'm almost like fully inverted here. This foot now is in the way. If I leave it here and I just drive this foot to the floor, I'm on top of my leg and I can't get up. So this leg is in the way, but it also helps me if I swing it low to the mat, it helps me get up really easily. So the goal is to make it as ergonomic as possible. So maybe we can rewind it. All right? So the biggest hang up I see teaching this all over is that hip disconnect. So make sure our hips are going to turn the corner. I want to be sitting in his armpit. That gives me a much more efficient sweep, but it also gives me multiple options later on. So one last time. That's what I want to hit. All right? Now I can stop here. So oftentimes what happens is um, the initial flow was started uh, as a back attack, right? So in a perfect world, I get my arm drag, I go to his back. But he does a good job of stopping me, so I switch. But I can continue my back attack here, right? So all I'm going to do is my flower sweep with the intent on having him facing towards the windows, and I'm going to knee pinch to gain back exposure. From here I can go to my gift wrap, get my chair set, and I'm still on the back. Ooh. Boring back legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to abandon ship and leg locking. So, let's do that. Let's go. <clears throat> Original intent, his arm drag to the back. We stop it. Ah, yeah. We flower sweep, we knee pinch, high knee. the back. Make sense? Let's clap. Right now, go. It was very good. I think everyone's got the gist of it. Everyone's doing a good job. The really cool thing is the way that I teach this, it allows you to fail at doing what I show, but still being a better flower sweeper. Right? So the goal really is turning that corner and getting a big overhead sweep and not thinking about this as a lateral trip. Yeah? So reverse flower sweep. It's going to be the same concepts, only we're going to go from the opposite arm. So I'm going to teach this first without using our legs, just with the upper body co uh, commitment, and then we'll add the legs in next uh, afterwards. I do this because not all of us will be flexible enough to do the leg involvement. But it's a really cool technique that I use all the time, um, just with upper body control. And it kind of feels like a uh, Kimura trap roll. Yeah? But here's what we're going to do. We're going to start in half guard. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab his wrist. Put his leg between his uh, legs. His arm between his legs. Okay, just like this, as straight as possible. If my shoulder is close to his shoulder and our arms are straight, this grip is really hard for him to break. Okay, he can posture up right now. So go posture up. But it's still hard to break that grip. Right? If my arm is bent or our shoulders are far apart, then he can start getting inside and pulling it. So when I'm fighting for wrist control, I'll grab it here. And the reason I can put it between his legs is because if he doesn't put it there voluntarily, I'm going to Kimura him. Okay, so I'm catching the wrist always. I play here all the time. If I see an elbow flare this way, I go for the Kimura, right? If he, th he feels the, th the, th the threat of the Kimura, he keeps his hand between his legs. I stiff arm it, and I grab his lap, right? So here's where we start. Half guard, hips are away, arm is straight, and I have a lat grip. All I'm doing now is encouraging him to pass over my bottom leg. 
Where is that? Walk here. Okay. From here, I go north south, and I just roll out this direction, and he falls this direction. I come here. Yes. So the same mechanics. I trap his arm. I put it between his legs. Right. Here. Now I can take him this way. And he rolls very easily. Right. If I am a caveman, I can still do this. Right. I catch his wrist. Catch his lat. Hug nice and tight. Once I have a lat grip, it's really hard for him to posture up. Right. I have good control here. Um, I can. Literally just bench press him, right? But let's not do that. If I move myself and keep my head on the same side as the hand, I can bench press him over like a lateral sweep. Don't do that, right? I want this shoulder to hit the mat. So I'm in the way right now. My head comes underneath him. I'm out of the way. Now I'm going to pull his lap and come on top. This works because his left hand will always be involved with my head from this position here. If I'm playing Z guard, he has to bring this arm in, right? So when it comes in, I'm catching. If his arm is outside of his leg, he's at risk of a Kimura. So he keeps it between his legs, right? As he pressures forward, I catch. Even here, if he decides he doesn't like where his hand is and he bends his arm, I go back to the Kimura. He doesn't like that, so he was go back to here. When I'm ready, my foot goes to the mat, come under, we go north to south, up to the top. So the first half of the sweep has very, very little leg involvement. It's all upper body. Second half, we add the legs in. Is that good? You can lie. But tell the truth, yeah? Ooh, ninja shit, please. All right, let's try it. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Okay, pretty simple, right? I think there's obviously flaws in everything, uh, but I use this all the time. Uh, if you roll with me, nine out of ten times, I'm starting off in a, like a Z guard shin shield. And I'm going to catch that wrist. I'm going to play from here. Right, I love this, this from here. I'll play overhook on this side, wrist control on this side, because I like how this feels so much, okay? Because I know that he has to cross face or pull it away. If he pulls it away, it's going to come back in. I catch it again. So I don't hold on real tight like a death grip. I just kind of monitor it. Usually it's open hand until I'm ready to use it. He pulls it away, puts it back in, I catch it again. Readjust and play from there, yeah? So, let's go this way. A couple good questions, right? Um, I have to encourage him to pass from here. A lot of guys will pass from here, right? They're still trying to pass my guard. But if I hook his leg, it's hard to pass. If I just drop my leg to the mat, now I'm in a good spot, right? Now I can monitor him with my top side leg. So usually I'll kind of push him with my shin. Uh, my flexibility would dictate how long I can make that last, right? So if he goes all the way like north south, I can touch him the whole way. I can keep a hook on him. Then when I'm ready, I can drop that hook off and make my sleep happen, okay? So uh, lots of ways to make it work, but lots of ways to make it fail too, yeah? So let's add the legs in. And this is where it gets a little bit funky. This one now turns from a kind of more speed and timing sweep that we just did to having a little bit more control over it. So to me, it feels exactly the same as the flower sweep. I have the arm. I'm still gonna put here, and I'm here, right? I'm in closed guard. Now, my legs are gonna go the same way they just went. Well, this time I'm going overhead to mount. So. Okay, do it. Go. <laughs> so, we have maybe a shin shield, right? Maybe a Z guard, but I have to have uh, an outside guard. I can't have a half guard, okay? I catch the wrist. Comes down, drive him in. My close up here. It's not a guillotine, it's the same lat grip we just had. Okay? From here, I need to get my hips right here. As I turn my hips through, I'm gonna push his arm between his legs. 
We already learned that if his hands go between his legs, he's more inclined to roll over that same side shoulder. That's what I want. Right now, my head is in the way, so I have to move my head. So everything comes underneath here. So it's the exact same thing, only now see, uh, see if we can post his right arm, okay? So I have to change my direction of sweep. I don't have control over that right arm, I have control the left arm. So my head comes out, and I roll over. Momentum will make it easier, but less efficient, okay? Strength will make it easier, but less efficient. It's not wrong to make a bad sweep good with strength. Right? It happens all the time. We don't prefer to go that way, but we can add strength, we can add speed uh, in, in the heat of the moment. Yeah? So our goal should always be to be able to drill all of these complicated techniques as slow as possible, showing complete control the whole time. And the reality is, if I do this sweep in a live match, I'd prefer to be as slow as possible. I don't want to scramble. Right? I want to have control the whole way. So, one more time. <clears throat> Close guard, or from a Z. I'm gonna catch the wrist between the legs, clamp, pull him in. From here, I've gotta move myself, so I'm turning to the corner. Now we know where to go. This is the exact same as that previous sweep, only our legs are in the way. And this is why I said flexibility will matter. Not all of us can hang out here, okay? From here, switch my legs, come out the back door, right to mount. One more time, faster. Go the wrist. Make sense? Fuck no. You guys are all gonna fuck this up. Everyone's like, fuck you. <laughs> we can't do that. Yes, Point your toes. Yes, sensei. Exactly. <laughs> Failure is not an option in my dojo. All right, let's try it. Ready? <laughs> all right, very good. So the reoccurring theme here was uh, having control of one arm. Understanding that we have, uh, I have two sets of tools, right? I have my head and my arms as one tool, and I have my legs as a secondary tool, right? We can sometimes utilize uh, a right side or a left side by clamping together arm and leg, but more often than not, most of our techniques are a product of legs doing one job and then upper body doing a secondary job, right? If we can think about our techniques that way, we'll always be at least safer in our transitions. So make sure we understand that. If I have the arm drag position, I can only trap, or I can only roll towards the, the trapped arm. Yeah? So I get myself outside, and I stop my feet down for my flower sweep. If I go for this, he pulls his arm out, I can switch sides. No reverse flower sweep. Yeah? If I have the, you know, most of us could, could accomplish this. Um, there were some giant dudes over there that did it just fine, right? Some big guys over here that couldn't do it. So, some little guys. <laughs> no, no, I think everyone can do this, right? Um, the really cool thing about this reverse action is I find it to be the most um, incrementally successful technique I do. Meaning I can make this happen over a long period of time. And so, once I have something controlled, where I want them here, this is a pretty strong structure for me. Right? In this scenario, I've got both of my tools clamping, which gives me a lot of control. Right? When I relax my legs and start manipulating with my legs, I have to overemphasize the clamping of my arms. And a lot of us, we're getting our head to uh, our opponent's left leg by relaxing our upper body. Right? I've got to bring him with me. So I'm nice and tight and clamped here. As I go to move, I've got to bump. Bump, bump, bump. And now I'm in a good spot. Right? Here's where I have a couple options. If I take my feet straight this way, I'll get a pretty effective sweep. If I lift him with my, left, my, right, my right arm, I get a pretty good sweep, right? Ideally, I do all of it. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to pinch his head in by bringing my elbow to my hip. We should just hang out here all the time. Right? So the more I get his head so that his, uh, what is it? Your right ear is on the mat the more efficient the roll will be and the safer it will be for everybody. So I pinch here. There's our nice tight roll. Our legs can now clamp, our arms can now manipulate. 
Do you have any questions? All the questions. Yes. Um, can you do it one more time? Okay, I want to see where your head is mm -hmm. in like which arm you're actually rolling on. Because I didn't know whether I'm rolling onto the arm that's holding onto his his arm yeah, yeah, yeah. or I'm rolling onto the one that's holding onto his yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lat. Cool. So the emphasis basically is understanding that we have to roll over a trapped post. Right? And so once I have the arm trapped, now all I gotta figure out is how I can make him roll this direction. Or more importantly, 11 o'clock. And so my head's gonna come underneath. Here. Now I'm looking the way I wanna roll. Right? But I'm still going over the trap post. So if he posts with his right arm, he can stop me going this way, like a flower sweep. So I can't go that way. If I go this way, my head comes out. And what really happens is I'm stuck here because of my head. So if my head goes out and looks towards the mat, it forces me in the mountain. Does that help? Yeah? And then lastly, we talked about just doing it with outer lower body connection. And I do this a lot too. And so we're playing from a C guard. I catch the wrist. He drives forward. Boom, we catch the lat. I have to encourage him to pass. So I will touch him with my top side shin shield. And I'm going to kick him over the bottom leg. All right? I can elevate his hips with my right arm. Okay? So this is a really accurate feed here. If I'm flexible, my hook stays on him just to monitor him until I'm ready. When I'm ready, my head follows my left leg. I come to the top position. So that last version should be really simple. You know, like white belt stuff. We can all play with that today. Everything else is a little bit more complicated. Yes? Could you show the transition from flower to reverse flower one more time, please? Yeah, I just made it up. Oh. Like, as I was speaking. Oh. So it wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I guess it could be real, right? So if I go, if I go arm drag. <laughs> Arm drag and he pulls out. Okay. I can switch arms. Yeah, so. Because he has to post one arm to pull his other arm out, either on me or on the mat. So I just switch back and forth. Yeah. And I do that often with a lot of techniques where I might want your left arm, so I attack your right arm, you defend it, I get what I want. Yeah. So, but just think about it as like if I can get the wrist control, I want to strip away from it and then stop the wrist between the legs, we have a lot of cool actions from there. Okay. And it works because they're stuck in this dilemma of, if I break the grip, I bend my elbow, right? And I'm forcing them to bend their elbow. They can't break the grip of the straight arm. Once I have an elbow flare, then I have a Kimura attack. If they're threatened by the Kimura attack, they straighten their own arm, and they go back to the sweep attack. You've got to play this kind of, you can have a choice, but they're both wrong. That's always the goal. Cool? Thank you guys for your time. Um, let me get a photograph. Small request. Let me go to that wall way down there. I know it's far. It's far, but it's cool. <laughs> so let's go down there. Yes.